Here's a fun fact for you all. The last time we seen some button changes to Minecraft Pocket Edition, the Bedrock version, was back in 2015. Welcome back, my name is Echo, and I hope you're having a great day. In the latest beta, which is version 1.18.30.22, or the preview version 1.18.30.23, the developers have finally, after many years, introduced some new button layouts, which I want to talk about and mess around with in a little bit more detail. For seven years, these have been the Minecraft Pocket Edition buttons, and I think everybody's just adapted to them. But finally, changes are being made. However, what I do want to say in today's video is that these are subject to change. And the developers are looking for feedback on this. But after reading a bunch of your comments, a lot of you are really happy with the direction that it's going in. My current request for the new buttons is to introduce the ability to toggle your perspective. Having to go into options and then settings and then all the way down to video to change your perspective still in 2022 is not the way Pocket Edition should be. All right, so let's get into this. Now, for anybody who's in the latest beta or preview version, now when you go into your settings and you head over to the touch controls, you'll see that there is a new toggle at the top, which again is a work in progress and subject to change. Now, when you enable this, there is a couple of different options. The classic way is the way you've probably been playing Minecraft Pocket Edition literally forever. It really hasn't adapted or changed as the game has grown. Now, I want to start off with the touch controls because I think one of the most important things with this new update is going to be crosshair mode. So the touch ones, let's start with this. First change you will notice is on the bottom left of your screen. You go from like a D-pad looking button to what I'm going to call a joystick, which I think already is much more of a better start for these controls. I feel like you have so much more control of the direction you're going. You know the exact way you are wanting to go rather than having some extra arrows to indicate the direction that you're pulling your controls. However, one thing I will say about this is on phone, it is absolutely huge. So I feel they definitely need to give players the ability to resize this button. Now, if you are currently messing around in beta and you go back to settings, there is one thing that I've messed around with in the touch controls, and that is your, your thumbstick uh, opacity. So I've been reducing mine much more, so you can like hardly see it, but you, you can still see it enough to aim in specific directions. So if you are playing on a phone and your device isn't that big, then that's what I would recommend doing. Again, hopefully they introduce some kind of resizer. Obviously pulling the Joy-Con in the direction that you want it to go will take you in that direction. You're not stupid, right? Now, one thing I want to tell you is if you are using this mode and you double tap this up, it will then give you the ability to sprint. It's like a quick action. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't lock it to a sprinting mode. I wish there was like a lock key, so it literally locks it to a sprinting ability. I think that could be really uh, handy in, in the future. So let's focus on the buttons on the right hand side. So obviously this arrow down is going to give you the crouching ability. This one is going to give you the jump. If you double tap it fast in creative, obviously you can go up. Double tap it, you're going to fall down. You'll probably notice though that there's actually another button. Now this other button only becomes highlighted when you're moving and that is another quick action to sprint what i have noticed though is that you need to get the joy stick certain length forward in order to be able to sprint here so as you guys can see here so you can't just instantly sprint there you have to move it just a little bit higher there you guys can see what's going on there so yeah that that is one thing you can just aim forward and then tap obviously two, using two hands is going to be so much easier than one and obviously you can tap on these to jump or you can tap on this to slow down because your crouching ability and i think this is a more advanced than the classic way but incredibly simplified compared to what i'm going to show you in a second i want to talk about one feature i do not like i've noticed over the past few hours of me messing around with these buttons i don't like the position of these buttons We've gone from having one button on the bottom right, literally right next to your hand, 
to these buttons being a lot higher up on your device. Now I use a Samsung Galaxy Tab, which is a little bit of a bigger device compared to a phone. So I'm actually having to hold my device on an angle. So what I would like to see, and I think you all agree with me here, is the ability to map our touch controls. Give us the ability to move certain buttons to certain locations. Minecraft is the most sold video game of all time. They need to take a leaf out of the likes of PUBG's book, Fortnite Mobile, Call of Duty Mobile, where you literally have the ability to fully customize your controls to how you like to play the game. But again, this is still very early stages, and I think with enough feedback, this can be a very positive change for the community. Right, let's move over to the more advanced controls. And this is called crosshair mode, which again, is more advanced and it's probably gonna take you a little bit of time to get used to this. This makes no changes to the joystick. However, it does introduce two extra buttons. Let's focus on this button first, which is, of course, a sword. As you can see, we are hitting here now. Now, if I was to tap anywhere else on my screen, which you guys can't see, but you might be able to hear it, you probably notice that I'm doing no action in game. Now, you've probably gone from your left hand doing a lot of movement in Minecraft to the complete opposite. Now, your right hand is gonna have to do a lot more. If you are a Minecraft player or a gamer on mobile in general that likes to use claw, well, I think this is gonna benefit those people a lot more. Now, if you play Minecraft casually, you could probably still learn this, but it is gonna take you a little bit of time. Now, by using the sword button, of course, you have the ability to break blocks. Not only just attack things like sheep or players, etc., you're also able to break blocks. This is your placing button, where you're able to place blocks on the floor. You can't, it doesn't do anything if you're doing it like this, so it's not your attack ability. That's where the sword comes in. This is pure and simply for placing down blocks. Now this button here is even more important than you actually think because what pocket edition players have never been able to do is speed bridge. If you're learning this for the first time like I am, my advice would be to look directly down below you, jump up and place a block. So this may take you a little bit of time to get used to, where of course you need to tap your buttons, but as you guys can see here, we are now automatically placing these buttons on the floor. Now, if you can introduce another finger into play, you'll notice here that we're able to jump and place at the same time. We're not having to tap single blocks at a time. We are instantly speed bridging, which is gonna offer a completely different door for PVP on mobile. Now, if you wanted to, you're still able to lock in front of you and tap it down so you're still placing one button, but this is extra movement that you don't need to do. Because with the introduction of the ability to hold this button, you can just hold and speed bridge. Well, this kind of movement has been requested for a very long time for the Pocket Edition players. Now, what I've noticed when I'm doing this is that I'm having to hold my device on the bottom left, but also top right as well. And again, I'm using a Samsung tablet. If you're on phone, it's probably not too much of an inconvenience. And honestly, I think if you're on phone, you're probably going to have even more control because if you're on phone, then you're able to start introducing the jump ability as well. And obviously, you're going to have the sprinting ability. But this is a huge introduction to the game. But unfortunately for players, though, they're not able to experiment with these in servers, which is a little bit of an inconvenience. Though for those who like to PvP, I'd highly recommend going to mess around with your friends in single player worlds just to get a grip of what you think about these changes. Something else I also noticed is that when you're in creative, it's got extra lines to indicate that you're going up or you're going down. So I noticed it's actually slightly different when you're in water. Check this out. So you can see the buttons here kind of have the wavy effect, which indicates that you're underwater. So simple things like that, I think, are a great introduction. Again, I want to see the ability to map these controls, and I like the fact that you've got two separate buttons here to do two separate things, like obviously placing blocks or breaking and attacking things, which again, your right hand is going to have to do more work here, and I think anyone who can master the claw ability is going to be very, very powerful in Minecraft, and especially on servers. Yeah, these are incredible changes, but of course, I still think there is room for improvement. The ability to remap your buttons is the most important. 
And in my opinion, the ability to resize. So we'll see where this goes. We're probably going to see more changes going forward and I will keep you all updated. But let me know your opinions down below in the comments section. And which controls do you think you'll be using? Have a great day. Catch you next time.